Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 18. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 12. It says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it has pleased him. Everybody say that. As it has pleased him. Say it again. As it has pleased him. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a place. Now, the body of Christ, you've got to understand, it's not just the body that's inside the church, but you were the church even outside this building. You're the church when you go to work. You're the church when you are in the grocery store. You're the church everywhere you are. This is the body of Christ. We're all supposed to be the body of Christ. And far be it for us to think that, well, if you're not just being in our little group and our little thing. Now, I've heard some other churches say this, that they're the only church that's going to go to heaven. And I've even heard this come from other pulpits, that people say this is the only group of body of believers that's going to go. Well, I don't believe that. There's going to be a whole body of believers. God is calling the body of believers to work together. And so because of that, he says, I'm trying to get you into a place where you can really perform. Now, just because you're not a five-fold ministry gift does not mean you're not part of the body. If you're part of the body, you're supposed to be a mouthpiece for God, no matter where you are. You're still sharing the things of the Lord. If it's just at your home, you're sharing with your family. If it's just at work, you're sharing with people right now. Some people have been told, you can't share this at work. Well, interesting enough, if they ask you, you can. It's just that way. So you have to prepare yourself in such a way that you can be ready to share the gospel. Amen. God's given each person a gift. He's given you a grace to receive that gift. So you have the gift and the grace are the same thing. You've got this grace from God to do a certain thing. And he wants you to be in a certain place with that grace. So you have grace and a place. God said that's important. And look at 1 Peter 4.10. 1 Peter 4 and verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, now he's talking about the grace of God, that gift of God. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister one to another. What he's saying here is, if you have a gifting, you're not supposed to just use it for yourself and making money and doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use that gift to minister to someone. If you've got that gift of God, and that's what he's given when you've been born, you were born with a gift. When you got born again, he gave you more gifting. When you got filled with the Spirit, he gave you more gifting. And all along your life, he continues to pour gifting out to you. So you have a grace of God. Now here's what he wants you to do. As you have received the gift, and he's given you this gift, as you've received that, he said, spend time ministering that gift, not just to make money, not just to make your household better, not just to make yourself more convenient, not just to make yourself more comfortable, but you're supposed to minister that gift to someone else so that they can be saved. And somebody said, well, we, you know, I got a gifting to be a machinist. Hey, I know some good machinists, great machinists. One particular machinist, he goes to work every day and he got a whistle on his tune. Man, he's whistling, God is so good. He's whistling that all the time. God is so good. And people always ask him, how come you're so happy? And he said, because God is so good. And they say, is, is that all you think about? He said, no, that's, that's what's on my mind all the time. But I think about other things. I'm thinking about how other people need to get saved. Are you saved? And that's how he always asks the question. And they said, well, they brought it up. So he says, okay, then are you saved? And, and they say, well, what do you mean? Well, have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? And he leads a lot of people to the Lord as a machinist. Now, there's 300 people in his machine shop, but he has led probably 28 or 29 of them to the Lord. You've got to think about that. He's almost at 10% of the whole crowd has come to the Lord just because of him. Now, that's even more powerful than some churches. Are you with me? He's got a miracle going on. There is a particular businessman that I know, and this businessman has an anointing to be a businessman. He, does, he makes money hand over fist. He just makes money. He's done a good job with that. However, 
He leads people to the Lord all the time. Know this business, man. Leads people to the Lord. Well, he's gone on with his life, and he's been leading so many people to the Lord. Some folks asked him, well, why don't you think about opening a church? Uh, why don't you open a church? You know, some people are called to open a church, and other people are not called to open a church, but do what they've been called to do. So he was told, why don't you open a church? So he decided, well, maybe I'll open a church. And he opened a church, and, and something drastic happened. It, it didn't work. As a matter of fact, it went in the hole. He put several hundred thousand dollars into it, thought he could build a building and people would come. And he built a building and nobody came. Amen. It's not a matter of you just having the money. What it's a matter of is are you the called. And this is part of God, what he said he wants. There's a grace given by God to do what he's called you to do. If, now listen to me, write this down, very important. Giving you something, you should write this down. If you're out of your place, you're out of your grace. And you'll fall on your face. <laughs> it's the word of the Lord. He said, now if you're out of your place, you're out of your grace. And you'll fall on your face. That's pretty good. You know, it takes faith to follow the things of the Lord. Somebody said, would you say that again? Yes, one more time. If you're out of your place, you're out of your grace, and you'll fall on your face. Amen. Now, God has given some specific things for us to do, and it takes faith to follow his lead. Anybody ever known that when he gives you something to do, it usually takes a bunch of faith to get that thing done? I mean, he tells people you have to marry a certain one or this one's going to be something you need to follow. It takes faith to go through that stuff. It takes faith to buy a house. It takes faith to get a car. It takes faith to live your life. It takes faith to make all sure all your bills are paid and be in the proper place. All that. It takes faith. Look with me at the word there in Romans 8 and verse 14. Romans 8, 14. Read this to you before, but the Lord was quickening me on this. And he says this in Romans 8 and verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. He doesn't say you should be led by your needs. He doesn't say you should be led by your opportunity. He doesn't say that you should be led by pressures. He doesn't say that you should be led by influences. He said that you should be led by the Spirit of God. Now, people need to keep this in mind. There's all kinds of ways to be led. I've known some people that are led by their needs. They're like, whoa, what are we going to do? I've got to have some needs met. I guess I'll have to give me another job. I guess I'll have to. You know, you better be led by the Spirit of God. If you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're going to get yourself in a world of trouble. Be led, not by your needs, not by opportunity. I told you of this before, but one guy I know, he said, well, I get to go to a whole nother state because I'm going to earn a dollar more an hour. Well, it takes him a bunch more money to move and a bunch more money to stay there and a bunch more money to live. I'll tell you what, it didn't turn out the way he thought it was at all. For a dollar more an hour, it didn't turn out good at all. Now, listen to me. Don't be, don't be led by pressure. Boy, does pressure come on some people and they're ready to make a move by pressure. They get under real pressure, and you know, here's how you can tell if, uh, what's in you when you're under pressure. It's kind of like toothpaste. You put it under pressure, and you can see what comes out. <laughs> this is how we're supposed to be for the Lord. Is good coming out of your mouth? Is righteousness coming out? Are the things of God coming out? You can tell what's in you by what's coming out. And don't be led by influences. Now look at verse 16, the same chapter. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. If you're going to be led by the spirit, you can tell that's the spirit because it bears witness. Some people don't have the understanding of how you know if that's the spirit of God or not. But he said, I'm going to give you that peace so that you know that's me. It's the influence of the spirit. He knows how to talk to you in such a way that you bear witness. That was his spirit that talked to me. Amen. And we are graced, but we're not graced to do everything. We're not graced to do everything. If you're graced to, and I, I talked about this before, if you're graced to be in one area, you can pray and you can read your word. But listen, you got to be led by the Spirit. If you're led by the Spirit, you're going to move into the right place at the right time. Amen. Some people have even tried fleeces. Oh, listen, I had a person come to me and said, look, 
I need to know if this is the Lord or not. So I prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, if this is you, open the door. Open the door. Let me come. Now, some people who are going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've done this before. Listen to me. Just because you got an open door doesn't mean that that's the Lord. Some people say, wait, 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 wait. If the door is open, isn't God trying to get the door open? Listen, if it's, if it's the Lord, he's going to have you go there and knock the door down if it's the Lord. I mean, that's what they did with the walls of Jericho. If it was God, hey, why didn't he just get rid of the whole walls? He did. And that they had to march around it seven times. It was like something they couldn't even believe. We got to do what? You got to march around and blow the trumpet. And on the seventh day, you got to march around seven times and blow the trumpets. And the walls will come tumbling down. Listen, if they had not believed what the Lord had said, then it wouldn't happen in that manner. But God sometimes has us do something, and it looks like this is completely out of... If it was God's will, it would just happen. That's not how it works. If it's God's will, it's because he's confirmed it to you. That's what he wants you to do. Amen. So you stay with it as the Lord leads us. Hallelujah. Now, if you're waiting for fleeces, and this is... One fellow told me, he says, you know, I've got this, I got this thing in my, my, I can't tell it, I can't explain it, but I don't have this feeling that I'm supposed to be involved with you. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I'm not sure how the Lord uh, is supposed to lead me, but I don't have this feeling that I'm supposed to be, you know, I said, wait a minute, you're being led by feelings. Either the Lord tells you it's, it's a confirmation in your heart or it's not going to tell you. He needs to reveal that to you, not because you have a feeling about it, but that your heart is confirmed. He said, okay, now, if we listen to Gideon, Gideon used fleeces, but Gideon wasn't born again. <laughs> Gideon was not born again. We can't be led by needs or opportunities or pressures or influence. We need to push that aside and look what the Lord wants us to do. Be led of the Spirit. Amen. Now, if we're going to think of what the enemy is doing, he does a trick. He plays a little trick. He tries to get you to spend yourself, do your work, be busy at something, but not on what God wants you to do. Be busy at something. Hang in there. Stay in there. And you, can, you know this is true. If God's told you to do a thing, it's supposed to eventually break through. He tells you how to do that. He says, stay with it. You're going to make a breakthrough. However, some people do something they think is the Lord. They think it's going to be good. They have kind of a feeling about it. So they stay with it until they're totally wasted. They're totally spent. And then when the Lord has been revealing to them all the time, they go ahead and give it a try, but they don't have enough energy to get it done. They don't have enough resources to follow through. And then somebody says, well, that's not the Lord. Well, you didn't even give it a good college try. It's, it was what the Lord had wanted you to do from the beginning, but what you have done is you were led by yourself instead of led by the Spirit. Amen. It's a trick of the enemy. He uses that so that you don't have the strength to complete God's plan. Amen. Now, I had a certain incident, incident, uh, incident happen to me clear back when I was going through Bible school. I had a young person or a a young man that came to me and said, uh, you know, would you pray for me? Because they, they told the people at the church where I was attending that we were in the Bible school and that we had attended this Bible school and that if anybody had needs or anybody needed something, they could see all the people from the Bible school and they'd be glad to pray for them. Well, you know, when you're learning how to use the things of the Spirit and learning how to stand up for God, you don't... Um, you don't really think people are out to try to get to you. You just think you're going to help them. You're just going to bless them. And so they said, all these people over here, these are the folks that you can just count on, and they're going to help you. They go to the Bible school, and you can just trust them and go get prayer. And I remember this one young man, he came to me, and he said, now, he said, I, I, I just need prayer. I said, okay. I mean, hey, that's, that's what I'm here for, you know. I've, I heard the pastor, and he said, you know, you could count on these Bible students right here, and we're going to pray. And I said, what is it you need? He said, I want you to pray for me. We don't have any food at home, and we don't have any, we don't have any gas money, and we're in real bad shape, and we don't know what we're going to do, and things are going downhill, and they turned our electricity off already, and they turned off our water, and we're living in the house without electricity and without water, and they're going to shut the house down. We're already on two months late notice. We don't have any food and, and uh, you need to pray for me and what are you going to do about it? Well, I, I said, what do you mean what am I going to do about it? He said, you, you know, how are you going to help me? How, how are you going to take care of that? 
pray for me. And, and then how are you going to take care of that? And I, I, I heard the prayer part. I just didn't hear the pastor say, and then take care of their need, whatever it is. I, I didn't hear him say that. So I thought, well, well oh, okay, uh, what am I going to do about that? I mean, I didn't say it out loud, but I thought, you know, gosh, he put this pressure on me now. What am I going to do about it? So I took his hands and I prayed for him. And I kind of stood there and I said, Lord, after I finished my prayer, I said, Lord, what can I say to him to help him? What, what can I do for him? How can I help take care of his need? Do I need to take a collection in the church? Or do I need to, to try to take care of this need myself? I mean, he's really in a, in a fix right here. What am I going to do about it? And the Lord said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you pray? I said, yes, sir. Okay. He's got the same source as you. It's me, not you. He's counting on you to come through and not me. Are you willing to show him he needs to put his trust in me, not in you? All of a sudden, my confidence level rose up. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what he's trying to say here. And I shared with him, I said, and the Lord's trying to say, you need to trust him as your source, and you need to, tr to call on him. Surely we can figure this out, but it's not a matter of figuring it out. It's a matter of putting your trust in the Lord, and he's going to take care of it. Now, the guy got mad at me. He was all upset with me, but he decided he'd go and pray. Sure enough, he's praying, and he was just, ooh, he was mad at me because I didn't take care of his needs. And he came up and told the pastor. And the pastor said, well, whatever he said to do, that's what probably the Lord was telling you. And he, saw, he was all mad, and he decided he'd just pray. So three or four days went by in prayer, and he got a check in the mail from some kind of settlement from where he'd been injured several years ago, and it paid up all of his debts, and bought his food. It happened in that week. Now you've got to say, if he hadn't been trusting the Lord, he'd been trying to put his faith in me. Amen. So what is your gifting? You better know what the Lord says to do, and you better hang on to that instead of trusting in your own self. Are you with me? So it was the Spirit of the Lord that came through at that particular time. Have the assurance to let the Lord do the work. Now, otherwise, you'll be living in detours and distractions. Instead of showing people how they're supposed to hang on to the Lord and trust in God, you'll get them to trust in what you can do for them. Now, I don't mind helping people, but you better help them because the Spirit of the Lord says to help. If the Spirit of the Lord says to jump in, jump in. Sometimes people jump in and then they're doing stuff and it's like, oh, is this taken away from what the Lord wanted? Because we don't ask, but we need to ask first. Now, here's what he said to do. He said that we should spend our time doing the things of the Lord. Step out and do what he called us to do. Look with me in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says this in verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself again with the fairs, of this life, that it may please him who chose him to be a soldier. Now listen to me. It says, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Don't get tangled up in the affairs of this life. God didn't call you to choose you to do that. He chose you to trust him. Amen. And if you're going to be in your right place, it's not because you've been told to go and, and take care of everybody's needs. Now if he told you to take care of a specific need, you take care of that need. That's exactly what he told you to do. I have one uh, friend that I know that he thought he would just use his money to take care of everybody. He, if anybody had a need, boy, he's just going to pile out the need, take care of all their needs. And he did real good till he ran out of money. Are you with me? And then he said, well, I thought God would just keep supplying. And I said to him, where did God tell you to take care of all the needs? God said that he would meet all the needs. Now, if he told you to do a certain thing, he would continue to keep supplying. But if you used up all your resources, that's just you. Amen. Amen. Now, it's important that you stay steady in the things of God. Just like it says in 1 Peter 4 and verse 10, if you are called, and it says, if you have a gift, as you have received the gift, minister that gift one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, let, me, let me break this down for you. You're supposed to use the gifting that God gave you to be involved in helping people get them saved, get them led to the Lord. 
Now, will that lead to helping in the church? Almost always it does. If you're leading folks to the Lord and gifting and telling them about what you're supposed to do, you'll be excited. You'll be surprised how God will push you into the things of the Lord and open up church business for you as well. Not to just overload you, but to use your gift wisely. And he promises that. Now, there's some things that he wants you to do in every walk of life. I've had people say to me, uh, well, you know, I'm raising my kids and I'm telling them this. You can just be anything you want to be. Well, you know, when I was going to school, I remember going to college and had an advisor sit down with me. And he said, you can choose any, job, any kind of, of commitment that you want to make. You can be anything you want to be. And I've heard this from a lot of teachers and a lot of people. I even heard this from some parents. But I heard this from the Lord. He said, it's not a matter of becoming what you want to be, but discovering who you were called to be. He's already got a plan and a purpose for each person. And he said, you've got to discover what he wants you to be. Not just a matter of finding out, but decide that you're going to dedicate yourself to discover what it is he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've had some people that... One particular person came to me and said, I'm having trouble with my son. He won't go to school. You got to talk to that boy. You got to make sure that boy will go to school. So sure enough, he brought his boy to me. You know, I'm not the Savior. I'm praying like, like, <laughs> I'm praying like crazy, saying, Lord, what do you want me to say to this boy? So I said, hey, what is it you want to do? I mean, what gifting do you know that God has placed in your life? And he said, to tell you the truth, as a young man, he's only 18 years old. He said, now, he had trouble. He didn't go to school for the last three or four years very consistently. He missed so many times. The truant officer brought him home from all kinds of places. And he finally said, I just don't like school. I don't like school. And I said, what kind of thing do you really like? What it, if God has placed a gift inside of you, usually you need to find out what that gift is so that you can do what God called you to do. And it's usually because you're good at something. What is the thing that, that you are good at? He says, tell you the truth. He said, I worked with an electrician last summer and I loved it. And he said, but I tried to tell my family I want to be an electrician. They said, no, you can't be an electrician. You have to go back to school. You have to, you have to finish and get your, get your general education first. You can't do anything. You can, you can never be an electrician. You're not smart enough. So he said, I really like electricity. And I said, well, what if you got into a school that would specialize in training electricity, but train you the rest of your, of your training so that you can get your degree and then help you to guide you into some kind of career so that you can become an electrician? He said, is that possible? The first time in his whole life he ever acted like he wanted to go to school. <laughs> and he, he said, is that possible? I said, let me, let me check and see if we can check with some career people and see what kind of a place they have to help train you in being exactly what you want to be, exactly what the Lord has put inside of you, the gifting that's already there. And he said, okay. Now, he'd never really want to spend much time following the things of God or being involved in church, but suddenly doing his gift, going to school on purpose, and being trained as becoming an electrician. He's 18 years old. By the time he was 20 years old, he was already an electric journeyman. He was working for an electrician as a journeyman. Now, you've got to say, wait a minute. His family said that you're not smart enough, but he was already making good money and going to church because he knew that the gifting that was placed inside of him had to be from the Lord. So he went off to church. Sure enough, he start, got involved with a church group where they started leading people to the Lord. Now, he was just involved as in being an electrician, but he didn't even want to go to school at all. But the Lord led him to the right thing because it was the gifting that was already placed in him. And suddenly, he was excited about life. At 24 years old, he found a young woman because he was already an electrician and had made good money. He was leading people to the Lord, and he met this young lady in church. And don't you think his parents got so excited about everything? They started going to church themselves just because their son was going to church, and he was telling people about the Lord. Now, he didn't try to become a preacher, but he did do this. He did tell them that he was going to use the gift that God gave him. He was happy to be following that gifting. Amen. 
Now, people need to follow up on what the Lord has said. He said there's a manifold grace, a manifold grace. That means not everybody is going to be a preacher. It's a manifold grace. It's a multiple of things. Some people will be a journeyman. Some people will be a teacher. Some people will be electricians. Some people will be a, a, a car mechanic. But they got a job to do for the Lord. Now, here's something important. I've had people tell me, how are you going to know if you're in the will of God? And for the last 35 years in ministry, I've heard people tell me over and over and over, you can't really know if you're in the will of God. But this morning, I'm going to break it down for you and make it so simple that you will absolutely know that you're in the will of God. Would anybody be a candidate for that? This is going to help you. You ready for this? How do you know if you're in the will of God? And I wrote it down even in your bulletin today. I put it down on a piece of paper on the nugget that I wrote down today. And here's how you know if it's the will of God. You always know it's the will. You may not know exactly what you're supposed to do at this time. But I can guarantee you this is the will of God. It is His will that you serve Him. Let me go over that again. <laughs> it is His will that you serve Him. Now, some people are confused with that. Well, well, how can I serve in the church? That's not what he said. You serve him. It's not just a matter of carrying things around in the church or turning on the electricity or even setting up the communion. But it's a matter of serving him. What does it take to serve him? In service to the Lord. That's what it means to serve him. In service to the Lord. And what, does it, what is the greatest thing the Lord wants you to do? He wishes that no man should perish, but all men should come to everlasting life. If you're in service for the Lord, you're in some kind of service to be sure that people hear the gospel of Christ. Now some people say, well, I, I don't know if I can go out and just share the gospel like that. Well, you should be in such a place where you're doing something so that the word gets out even though you weren't the one sharing that word, if you've got to build up the church and set things up and be a part of that, that's still doing the will of God because it's helping to share the gospel. If you're doing the will of God, His will is that you serve Him. I can guarantee you, anyone that's serving Him and you stay steady serving Him, He's going to reveal to you what your gifting is and how to use that. Just because you're serving Him, you're going to be thrust to the head of the class. You're going to become what He called you to be. When you're serving Him, you'll find the very niche that you were called to be in, how to use your talent for the Lord, and God will bless you again and again just because you're set out to serve Him. Amen. Believe me, it's the will of God that you serve Him. Say it with me. It's the will of God that I serve Him. Now everybody has heard it and you even heard it out of your own mouth. It's the will of God that you serve Him. To serve the Lord, it means you've got to do what it is He wants you to do. Amen. To serve the Lord with gladness. And the Bible says very clearly, here's one way to serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. It does say that. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now, what is singing for? Singing is to reveal the very presence of God, to get ready for the wonderful anointing of God. Just like this one man that whistles as he works, and people ask him, why are you so happy? And he says, that's because I've got God in my life. Hey, have you been born again? I'll tell you what, it's such an asset to be able to stay in the joy of the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you, serve the Lord, serve the Lord. One of the great ways is to serve the Lord with gladness. Another great way to serve the Lord, just come to church. You'd be surprised. Some people say, what do you mean? It says, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together as, the, as some do. Why do you need to come to church? It's not just because you want to be with other people. You can't live without the fellowship of each other. You need to be built up and stirred up and cheered up just to keep doing what God called you to do. The service of the Lord takes more than just one. Anybody ever had to do everything you felt like? It was all you? <laughs> yeah, you know that it's a lot easier with the bunch. Amen. If you got many of you, you can get it done in no time. Oh my goodness, I got to help 
uh, somebody move and all these people came and they were involved and they were moving like crazy and they helped put everything together. I'll tell you what, in two hours the whole thing was moved and done in and out to the next place and everybody went, that was quick. That's because everybody helped. <laughs> but have you ever moved somebody and it took you all day, all night, the next day and, and you were so tired, you was worn out. It's like, how come? Because you're probably the only one doing it. Amen. If you have more, it's easier. It's the same way in church. When you've got more, and this is, I've heard some people say that, well, I'd rather go to a bigger place. How come? Because they have more. There's just more to choose from. You know, you can't be a bigger place until you have more people coming. And when more people come, you can choose to get bigger. You choose to get bigger, you have more stuff to do. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, something important to remember. And this is something that the Lord said. He said, if you're going to have these giftings and gracings that come from the Lord, He's already placed that in you, serve the Lord with whatever that gift is. Serve the Lord with whatever that gift is. When I was going through high school, there was a guy in my high school was a teacher at the school. His name was Kingdom. First name, Kingdom. And we all the kids made fun of him. It's like, oh man, this guy, what's his name? Kingdom. Who would ever heard of a guy named Kingdom before? And sure enough, this guy would be in the class, and he was an English teacher, and sure enough, I got his class. <laughs> and in the English class, he would tell all the stuff he had to tell, but he'd tell just enough, just a hint enough about his relationship with God that everybody got curious and after classes, they would stay and say, what is that relationship with God thing? And he'd sit everybody down just like a class and tell the whole class about Jesus Christ. And then he'd go through the next day and every single class he had, and he had six or seven classes during the day, it's, it wasn't the same people, but every day he seemed to have more people in the class. And they'd tell their friends and they'd come to the class. And more people tell their friends and they'd come to the class. He said, they asked me. And so his whole class was filled because he was about doing the kingdom business. Are you with me? And he was named kingdom from the time he was small. He was doing kingdom business. Just as what, what the Lord wants us to do is business for the kingdom. And he was caught up doing kingdom business. And I'll tell you what, I made fun of him myself when I went through his class until I sat in one of the classes and heard him talk about the kingdom of the Lord. I said, I don't know, uh, I don't have anything to say but good stuff about him from now on. In fact, I got I to gotta take back everything I ever said about kingdom. The reason he's called kingdom is because he's doing the kingdom business. And it blessed me to know that he's about his father. Now, he never tried to open a church. And he never tried to, to become something he wasn't, but he was called to do what he was called to do with the very thing that he had, the gifting that he had, and he used it for the Lord. I'll tell you what, I look back at that and I think how blessed I was just to be part of someone's life that was using their gifting for the Lord. Amen. Now this morning, I want to encourage you. What gift do you have? What place are you supposed to be with that? No matter what the gift is, it's supposed to be used for the Lord. And if you use that gift for the Lord, I guarantee you he's going to gather you around together with others of like mind. You're going to be involved in the church somewhere just because you're using your gifting for the Lord. He promised that. And he says there's more of that to come. Now this morning, I want you to think about your life. Some people say, well, I've already, I've already done just about everything I'm supposed to do. I mean, I, I pretty much finish what I'm supposed to do. Well, your life's not over. It's not done. And some people say, well, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Uh, your life hasn't begun yet. You may not know exactly this, but you know one thing. You're supposed to serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Today, I want you to search yourself and say this, what do I need to do for the Lord? What gifting do I have that I can also keep serving the Lord with that gift? And let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today with this in mind. What gifting do we have to use for you? Lord, there may be someone here that would say, you know, I, I want to be able to know for sure how I'm supposed to serve the Lord, what his will is for my life. And listen to me, you're supposed to serve him. That's number one, serve him. And the gifting, the Bible says it like this, your gift will make room for you you'll find your place. Your gift that he's given you will make room 
for you. I want you to search yourself today. And you might say, I want to know more what my gift is and how I'm supposed to use that. If that's you, if you're really curious about your gift, he's going to reveal it and how to use that gift. I want you to raise your hand and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the gifting of God, the very gracing of the Lord that's been given, already gift has been given. I pray, Lord God, that gift is revealed, the gifting is used, the grace of God becomes alive and put in the place that it's supposed to be. I give you praise, Lord, that the very area that we've been called to be, we will serve. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.